Okay, it is 1 p.m. We'll call to order this meeting of the California Unemployment Insurance Appeals Board for Wednesday, February 17th, 2021. This is a Zoom meeting. Um, myself, uh, Member Ang, and Executive Director Kutri are in Southern California. The other members and staff, I believe, are in Northern California. Um, we'll begin with a roll call of members. The chair is present, uh, Vice Chair Reeves. Present. Present. Uh, seems to be a volume um, problem, Dan. Um, I'm here. I hear you now. Good, thank you. Member Reeves is present, Member Ng. Present. Member Allen. Here. Member Ken Monning. Present. Okay, please show all members present. Uh, at the meeting, moving now to approval of the minutes of the January 21st meeting, 2021. Um, is there a motion to approve? I make the motion. Okay, it's been moved that we approve the minutes. Second. And seconded that we approve the minutes of January 21st, 2021. We'll do a roll call vote. Uh, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Reeves? Aye. Member Ng? Aye. Member Allen? Aye. Member Ken Monning? Aye. Please show the minutes from January 21st, 2021 being approved unanimously. Moving now to the chair's report. Just a few items. Um, first of all, as I tell folks at each meeting, because we do have new people watching each month, um, the meetings are relatively short. Uh, the bulk of the board's work is not done at the meetings, but is done between meetings. And since our January meeting, uh, the board members have reviewed 472 appellate cases um, and have um, actually come to conclusion on those 472 cases. And I wanna thank you all for the work on that. Um, we now um, will look at other things that have been going on. Um, one of the things that's going on is board members Allen and Kent Monning on January 28th appear before the rules committee uh, for a confirmation recommendation and um, I don't know if any of you saw it. I watched uh, their confirmation hearing and they were superb. They, each of them did a great job in representing what we do as an organization and the great work in particular that our employees do, both judges and staff do um, for the organization. Um, Laura or Michael, have you heard yet when the floor vote is gonna be or has it already taken place? Yes, the floor vote has taken place. Um, Member Monty was approved 29-0, and I was approved 28-0. <laughs> well, who, who voted for her, didn't vote for you? Somebody walked off the floor to get a drink of water, I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, congratulations to both of you. You can talk more about that in your board report. I wasn't aware it's already passed the floor. Very, very good. So we have now a full board, a fully confirmed, full complement of five board members. and. As, as Member Allen knows, that hasn't always been the case. So um, we're very fortunate now to have five very strong members. Um, last thing I want to report, um, yesterday we had a leadership meeting of the Labor and Workforce Development Agency. And at that meeting, uh, George Okamoto, who handles their um, basically information technology for the whole agency, complimented the work that our office has done, and particularly uh, Jefferson Willoughby and his staff on our modernization project. So just want to pass that on and uh, we're all very proud of their work and we're all looking forward to uh, the modernization project being fully online, uh, hopefully sometime near the end of the summer, beginning of the fall. And, and Jefferson, I'm sure could tell us more about that. Um, with that, I will move on now to board members reports, which is item four. We'll begin with Vice Chair Reeves. I don't have one this month. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dan. Moving to uh, Member Ng. Um, I don't have a report this year, Mr. Chair. I mean, this month. Thank you, Mike. Member Allen. Well, I'll, I'll make it brief, but um, I, I think it would be very much in order to say a big thank you to all the staff who supported Laura and I as we went through the process. Uh, uh, everyone was so, so helpful. And, and I would say that the, the staff for the Rules Committee and, and, the, and, the, and the senators themselves were uh, very cordial, very friendly, and um, uh, generally interested in what this agency does. And one thing I was grateful for is that 
you're quite well aware of our independence from the EDD, because I was concerned there might be some confusion there, but they weren't, they, they, they were right on board. But uh, we were met with nothing but courtesy and just intelligent, good questions. And what could be a very difficult process was actually really a very positive process. You know, and, and Laura can speak for herself, but I've talked with Laura about this. One, one salutary thing about going through confirmation is that we had our briefing binders. We must have gone through our briefing binders 10 times to make sure that any possible question they had regarding the agency, we were ready for it. So um, that concludes my report, other than what I always say to all of you, that we're a team. I'm so grateful to every level of the organization, our, our field judges, appeals judges, my, my fellow board members, all the support staff, the folks that take phone calls from the public during this very difficult time. We're a team and I'm very proud of our team. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Member Kent Monning. Laura, you're muted. Michael said it very well. So I'll just add a little bit along the lines of what those briefing binders do for us. But the confirmation process was really such a great way of diving even deeper into the knowledge of what our agency does and reviewing so much history of the agency and monthly reports and all the data and just being tremendously impressed by how hard everyone has been working, especially since the time that I've joined the board during these challenging times. Um, and I just felt very grateful for the chance to do an even deeper dive. And I just feel so appreciative for everyone who supported us during the process, but also to get that lens and level of really seeing how hard people are working to continue doing our jobs during this time. So I really just want to thank everybody. And I was very appreciative for the process. Thank you, Laura. Uh, that concludes the board member reports. Moving on now to public comment, if there is any. I'll ask the moderator, do we have any members of the public waiting to speak? Good afternoon, Chair Block. We do not have any hands raised for public comment at this time. Okay, in that case, there is no comment in item number five. We move on to agenda item number six, a report by our Executive Director, Chief ALJ, Michael Kutry. Mike? Good afternoon, Chair Block and board members. Uh, congratulations, members Allen and Kent Monning on your appointments. It was a pleasure working with you uh, to reach that milestone. Uh, we've been, benefited tremendously from your uh, dedication to public service and, uh, and to our mission. I look forward to continuing to work with you and taking advantage of that enthusiasm as we try to work through this crisis. Um, the rest of this month's report will be shorter than usual. I can get two important items out of the way. Uh, we had no field office closures since the last report, which um, is absolutely thrilling to say. Uh, we, and we have no new security items. Uh, so I can get on to workload and uh, our timeliness measures. Uh, January was the second consecutive month uh, that the number of appeals coming from the department dropped. Uh, for reference, September through December saw our transmittals more than double the pre-pandemic level. Uh, in January, that fell to 50% higher than the pre-pandemic level. Uh, so it's a, it's a slight chance uh, for us to dig in and see some momentum in working through our backlog. Um, EDD recently acknowledged that it has taken uh, four to six weeks to send appeals to CUIB uh, since December, which makes it virtually impossible for us to improve our timeliness figures. Uh, so in turn, we continue to focus on the oldest cases that we have in our inventory, uh, hear cases as soon as they are received and as soon as that is possible to avoid further claim delays and provide appeal resolution to those most in need. Um, so with that backdrop, I give you the January timeliness measures. Um, the month of January, we closed 5% of cases within 30 days, bringing our annual uh, evaluation year to 53 points, uh, to, excuse me, 53 percent uh, short of the 60 percent uh, annual goal by the Department of Labor. Uh, we closed 14.3 percent of our cases within 45 days, uh, bringing our annual measure to 76 percent short of the 80 percent required by the Department of Labor. And given uh, what I told you about the delays coming from EDD, it's no surprise that our average case age also rose uh, to an average of 75 days. So I've been briefing the board on the national appeal landscape for UI, and it continues to be similarly problematic. Uh, the, the last reported figures are from December, so they lag our reports by a month, um, but those showed an average of 14% resolution within 30 days and 28% of resolution within 45 days, both of which were trending down to end 2020 and 
both, both of which we hope will rise as 2021 climbs out of uh, the pandemic crisis. Uh, so in light of our grown backlog um, and the continuing unemployment emergency, we continue to address our backlog with a number of strategies. Uh, we concluded 2020 uh, up 22 new judges and 20 new support staff. Uh, we have training cohort for more new judges starting this week and our ongoing recruitment will bring more on board in the coming months. Uh, due to health and safety issues, we have not been able to employ our traditional team calendar approach to resolving um, bulk groups of cases. So in turn, all judges are hearing elevated case loads and many have volunteered for extra cases above that and we are grateful. Presiding judges continue to hear large numbers of cases, including exceptional uh, cases that have been alleged fraudulent by the EDD, uh, in addition to their regular duties. So at the top of everyone's mind, I, I'd like to end the report uh, on the vaccination subject. Uh, there have been many inquiries about vaccination plans for our staff and for other state employees who continue to report to the office and have throughout the pandemic. Uh, some of our employees have had access to the vaccine because of other eligibility factors, uh, but to date, no tier that would include our staff has opened in California. So we are closely monitoring the various county requirements and benchmarks for vaccination, and we're prepared to assist, assist our staff in, in uh, conjunction with the labor agency and the governor's office in any way possible once those appropriate tiers open. Um, that concludes my report for today. I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you, Mike. I know a couple of us are in the old people tier, so we already qualify for the vaccination. Um, let me uh, go to our first uh, person having any questions or comments, Vice Chair Reeves. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Mike, I just want to thank you, your team and ALJs, for treating this crisis with the urgency in which it requires. Uh, the work that you're doing and your team is doing is enormously important people who need those benefits to survive. I just want to thank you. I know how hard it is. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Dan. Moving on now to Member Ang. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Director Kutcher, I just wanted to thank you for taking my questions between the meetings. Um, that's been very, very helpful. And as a result, I have no questions or comments any further. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Member right. Ang. Yes. Um, just a brief comment. Of course, thank you for, for keeping us surprised of everything that's going on in your reports and your availability. The one thing I would ask you is that I would support um, Vice Chair Dan Reeves noble quest to remove the double negatives from our decisions <laughs> and anything that could be done regarding this not ineligible nomenclature, more plain English would be appreciated. It's a noble quest and I support it. it fixes in the works. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Member Allen. Um, and Member Kamani. Just thank you, Chair Kutri, for your availability and really good communication channels with the board members consistently and in between meetings. It's really appreciated. So thanks for all your hard work. Thank you, Laura. With that, we'll move to item number seven on our agenda, which is a report by Jody Remke, our presiding administrative law judge for appellate operations. Jody. Good afternoon, Chair and Board members. I'm going to go over the key performance indicators that are in your packet. As you can see, for the last month, uh, for meeting the 45 days or less, we were at 87.5%, which is, again, a strong month. Um, unfortunately, overall for the year, we're still below the 50% standard of those cases. We're at 43.1%. Um, you can see, though, when you jump to the 75 days or less, how significant um, we bump up to 95.5%, 96.9% for the year. So as I said in the past, although we might not make that 45 days or less, we are really close, um, missing it by a few days in some cases. So it's a kind of a wait and see game at this point, whether we're gonna make it for the year, because um, as you know, it really depends on the overall number of cases we process. And because, as you can also see, our case pendency is a bit low right now, we're just creeping up slowly, even though each month we're doing so well. So it's 
you know, we don't have as many appeals as we thought we would get in light of the number in the field. So it's just really hard to change that um, annual percentage. But again, we're continuing to do well and hold strong on the cases we do get. Thank you, Jody. Any questions or comments for Jody, Vice Chair Reeves? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Jody, I just want to thank you. I know that uh, um, that progress is slow going, um, but this is an enormous crisis. It's unprecedented in many ways. So thank you for staying on top of it. And I'll try to turn my cases around as quick as I can. March Madness. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Uh, Member Ng. Yes, thank you. I want to just um, continue the theme of um, Mr. Allen's reference to Vice Chair Reeves by adding a not inconsistent comment about clarity to the claimants. And I want to thank you and also Dr. Kutri for uh, using the um, language in the lost wage assistance uh, so that there's a hard number upon which the claimant can compared to the $100, as well as the, um, the Fed Ed decisions, which really are some complex calculations, even for me as a board member, and having those articulated uh, either in the field, and if not, uh, I find that the appellate um, judges are making sure that they're added into the decisions. I really want to thank you. I think that's part of our, our mission to be transparent um, and make it uh, during this time of great stress for claimants so that they have a better chance of understanding uh, the basis for their approval or denial. Nothing further. Thank you. Thank you, Member Ng. Member Allen. Yeah, uh, just to follow up on the comments being made, I, I think all the board members have a great desire for clarity in our decisions. So this system is complicated, and claimants a lot of times do not understand how we got arrived at our decisions. So anything that you can do and that we can do to make it clear to them is all to the good. And so I thank you for helping us make our decisions as clear as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Member Kemani. Just echoing on that, I think I've noticed a trend in my time here that we really are trying to add guidance where we're able to, to make the decisions that we issue as clear as possible because there is so much confusion, understandably, out there. And I think that that's fantastic. And as long as we have the volume that we have at the second level and we're able to add clarifying guidance where we can, it's a really great um, you know, goal to have to really help people in their time that they're struggling. So I, I've been really pleased with that. Okay, thank you, Laura. Again, thank you, Jody. Moving mm -hmm. on now to item number eight, a report by our Chief Information Officer, Jeff Willoughby. Jeff. Good afternoon, Chair Block and members of the board. Uh, a brief update this month. Uh, thanks very much, uh, Chair Block and a Agency Information Officer Okamoto for the kind words and vote of confidence. That's very nice to hear. I obviously don't do that myself, and I really can't thank our IT team uh, and the subject matter experts who are um, working in very detailed fashion in a very iterative model where they have to test things in some cases several times to make sure that it's, it will be right for that end product. And um, they're making solid progress on the current sprint, which as I mentioned last month is on scheduling of hearings uh, with all of the variables and permutations that go around that. Uh, our next focus will, will uh, our, our next sprint will focus on the, the hearing itself, the hearing proper. So that's a, a key to what we, we do as an organization and we wanna make sure that we get that part absolutely right. So we're holding meetings with the vendor this week, in fact, to clearly define the requirements, and we'll, we'll start testing that functionality very shortly. So we're looking forward to that. Um, in terms of things that are front of mind, that, that is front of mind for IT uh, right now. And that concludes my report for this month. Any questions? Thanks. Thank you, Jefferson. Questions or comments for Jefferson, uh, Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't have any questions. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Sure. Member Ng. Uh, yeah, Jeff, so I just wanted to um, thank you and your staff for incredible assistance on the help desk. Um, as you know, these tech challenges occur quite frequently, and I, I want to say I've never had such a uh, tremendous turnaround, um, and I, it really is helpful because we're waiting to get online or access uh, uh, you know, webinar, and it's just been lightning fast. So if you could 
uh, accept that and relay that to the staff. It's been very, very much appreciated. Will do. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, Member Allen. Yes, Jefferson, I would, I would convey to you that during our confirmation hearings, there was some healthy skepticism regarding our ability to have this project done on time and on budget. And I, and I think uh, uh, they, they were kind of uh, looking at me askance until I mentioned to them this was off the shelf software, which helped uh, mightily in their concerns. And that uh, essentially, um, I even, if you remember a few board meetings ago, I asked you about what were sprints and how what you do sprints so that you, you kind of layer it through. So you, you kind of test it before you put the whole thing together at each level. I even shared that with them. And the, the long and short of it is they seem quite satisfied, even though they, when you're a legislator, there's always gonna be re residual skepticism regarding this, but I, I think their concerns were pretty much put to bed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Member Kent Allen. Kent Monning, but we have been spending a lot of time together. Um, <laughs> so Jefferson, I just- yeah, That's right, sorry. <laughs> um, you helped me with a phone call meeting teams meeting a week back or so with some combined tech and process questions I had, and I really appreciate it. So made some forward progress with that, and thank you for your time and all the hard work you and your team are doing. It's really- impressive and I know that the up, uptick of work has been felt by everyone and I think especially by your staff. So we really appreciate all the hard work. Of course, thank you. Thank you, Laura, Ken Monning. Um, and thank you, Jefferson. Moving now to our last report, item number nine on our agenda from Rob Silva, our Chief Administrative Officer. Thank you, Mr. Chair and good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I too have a fairly brief report today uh, beginning with um, some personnel information. I reported at the last board meeting that we had a recruitment for 20 administrative law judges uh, with the final filing date of January 16th. And uh, CUIB management has really acted swiftly on this particular recruitment. And I'm pleased to announce that it's been about 30 days and we already have um, 14 of the 20 candidates um, are either in the name approval process or have been sent formal offers of employment. Um, the uh, Chief Kutry touched on the fact that the last six ALJs that were hired from the previous recruitment are in training this week uh, with Rebecca Bach. The, the administrative services portion of that training will be this Friday. This is a new component that ALJ Bach requested um, that we add to her training uh, module, and it covers uh, personnel items such as um, onboarding documents, uh, timekeeping, and leave accruals. Pardon me. Um, we get into health benefits, 401k retirement. We also cover uh, things such as uh, the annual conflict of interest reporting requirements and uh, state bar dues reimbursement. Uh, with regard to the hiring of support staff, uh, as of the January board meeting, we had 25 support staff positions pending in the hiring process. Um, Ten of those positions have been filled over the last three weeks. However, with some of those appointments resulting in promotions, coupled with uh, the need to backfill some very recent retirements and other positions vacated due to um, different types of attrition, uh, as of today, we still have 25 support staff positions <laughs> pending uh, in the hiring process. Um, of that group of 25, we currently have nine candidates uh, in the name approval process. So that's moving swiftly as well. Um, to provide an overview of the support staff hiring, we have filled 46 support staff positions since the onset, onset of the pandemic related workload increase. Uh, again, with this 25 still currently pending. Um, suffice it to say that admin is bustling with hiring activity, but I assure the board that we're staying on top of everything and we continue the jigsaw puzzle of appointing people into classifications where they're most needed, uh, particularly within field operations. And I wanted to provide an update with regard to the budget call letters. Um, on January 28th, we released the personnel and operating expenses budget call letters for state fiscal year 2021-22 uh, to all of the CUIB cost centers over the 
past couple of weeks, uh, Doug Mattis of Administrative Services and I, as well as Sandra Garcia in uh, IT, have been working closely with the field operations presiding ALJs and the supervisors um, on their requests with regard to pricing, um, office design, uh, machine and furniture replacement schedules. Um, we've worked closely with them uh, to ensure that their justifications are well written because we want to make sure that they're not ineligible to receive the equipment they so need. Um, the due date for the operating expenses and equipment request for field operations is this coming Friday. Uh, I then will consolidate all of the field office requests and then on Monday um, the other branches within CUIV and then me on behalf of FO, Field Operations, will submit all of the data processing requests to IT uh, for their review. The requests are reviewed by IT to ensure that they comply with the equipment standards um, and that they're compatible with our data processing environment and are supportable by the IT staff. And IT will take a couple of days to review and respond with alternative solutions if applicable and also weigh in on any uh, peripheral needs uh, that may have not been identified in those initial data processing requests. And then on Thursday, February 25th, the remaining call letter requests from the non-field operation branches are due to administrative services for complete consolidation of everything um, to review with the executive director. And that is my report. Thank you, Rob. Any questions or comments or administrative services chief Rob Silva? Start with Vice Chair Reeves. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't. Thank you, Rob. Thank you, thank you Dan. Member Ng. Uh, none for me, except thank you for your uh, report and, and responsiveness, as always, uh, Mr. Silva. Mike. You're welcome. Member Allen. Rob, I do have a question for you. Um, are, are you happy with the support services for personnel hiring that's provided by EDD? Is that working okay? Because we used to do it in-house many years ago, and then it got farmed out to EDD. How is that working? Uh, it's, it's working well. Uh, there was, uh, when they made their hiring push, as we were, but uh, about the beginning of the current fiscal year, we ran into some problems because they were doing so much hiring. It was really hard for them to also keep on top of what we needed done. Um, but we were in contact with them over the period of about a month, around June, July, explaining how, because they're focusing on their hiring for their UI branch. And I was trying to explain to them that essentially we sort of are a different type of UI branch and we're just as important in that vein. So they've been very responsive um, to us since that time frame. Thank you, Michael. Member Kent Manning. Um, no questions. Just thank you, Rob. I know this is what you do, but the volume of what you're doing um, has increased tremendously and you have a positive outlook at it. And I can't wrap my head around how much work you must have. So thank you very much for your updates and all the hard work. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, Rob. Um, if member, I'm sorry, Chief Counsel Wu Sam, it looks like we have no closed session today. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Block. Okay, since there is no closed session, if there is no other business for open session, we've completed all items on my agenda. So I will declare this meeting adjourned. Thank you all for attending.